Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about recruiters and just sort of the recruit recruiter industry, some things to keep in mind and be aware of, and how to really interact and work with recruiters. What are some of the pros, what are some of the cons, how you can get the most value working with the right one. <laughs> I want to thank our sponsor, Code.Energy, who actually just released a new book on computer science, breaking down those fundamental computational problems, algorithms, data structures, all the items you're going to need to know to pass those technical interviews so that when you do have a recruiter and I set you up with an interview, you're ready to get up and go and, and kill it. Because at the end of the day, even if you get that phone call and you kill it, the technical interview part is where you're going to have to go through, and you can get it for just the low price of $19 ebook or the ebook and a hard copy. I personally love hard copies of books. I always get the hard copy for just $39. There'll be a link in the description to check it out. So pretty much any developer has worked with recruiters or been contacted by recruiters. You'll see here back like eight months ago, if we were just to go all the way up, I'm, I'm getting an email from a recruiter pretty much on a, on a, almost daily you know once every couple of days sometimes you know a monday through friday sort of business you can see it's going on and on and on and on and on and these aren't all recruiters but the bulk of them are right the bulk of them are are recruiters and so um you know it's it's common for people to hit you up about potential opportunities on linkedin via email on the phone so the first thing to keep in mind is um the reason i showed that is um, a lot of people misunderstand what a recruiter's job is and their role, and they think that, you know, oh, I'm working with a the recruiter, they're going to get me a job. That's not really how it works most of the time. Um, for the most part, there's two types of recruiters. There's recruiters that uh, work at agencies, uh, some some popular ones you might he have heard of, some like tech systems or um, – that's the only one that comes to mind right now. But there's a, there's a bunch. You, you don't recognize the name. So um, – Things like uh, tech systems, and their their job is they basically nine out of ten recruiters basically just take your resume and forward it. They might reformat it. Um, and those types of recruiters, agency recruiters, um, where they shine and where they can provide value is depending on the organization is larger companies let's take microsoft for an example will work with four or five recruiting agencies or 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 other companies where these are the four companies they bring us candidates that were qualified and we have a direct into them that's really where they shine like um, my current work hires through the same recruiting agency and you know they have that business relationship where they have a foot in the door hey we got somebody i think he's right for your role let me give it to you and that's a lot of how recruiters work. Can you get a job without going through a recruiting agency? Absolutely. And oftentimes when you do, you are in a better bargaining position. The reason for that is these agency recruiters, they are commission-based nine times out of 10. And so their commission is typically a percent of your salary. So say you get hired for hundred thousand dollars and it's a 20 percent commission after you've been there usually there's stipulations whatnot after you've been there six months then they're gonna get 20 grand off you you know being a good employee and that's a that's a that's a large amount of money right and and so they have this working relationship but but brings me to my second point is because that's a large amount of money you can never trust what a recruiter says. Never, ever, 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 ever trust what a recruiter says. Um, they have, I, I mean, this, this is, if you have a working relationship, you've worked with the same recruiter before, um, you know, it all varies, but, you know, trust but verify. How about that? Trust but verify. But because they have a financial reason. To, you know, if something stands out to you and he's like, you know, well, I'm going to pass on the offer because I didn't get a good vibe about this. They're going to try and reassure you. They're going to try and tell you because you saying no to the offer is you just took twenty thousand dollars out of their pocket. Right. They are. Their job is to convince you to take the job if the offer comes in at that point in time. 
So go with your gut in that aspect. There's another group of recruiters as well. Uh, and by the way, I have gotten uh, three or f I recruiters that work in these agencies. As long as you interview and test well, it's it's usually a much faster process from in my experience. But most people I feel like get referred because most people who are getting jobs already have jobs in software development. They're getting scalped away, and uh, that's why you see like hundreds of LinkedIn messages, right? Um, but keep keep that in mind. So the other the other type of recruiter is a in-house recruiter. So this is somebody in an HR department, let's just say actually works at HR and Microsoft in this in this instance, and they will actually, sometimes they get bonuses um, depending on how they get, but it's not gonna be a percent of your salary typically. Every, every organization is different, but the typical HR person that's handling recruiting, they're in fact getting a salary and they are, you know, they, they're gonna be more picky also is what I'm trying to say. Uh, because they don't have that compensation that's directly tired, tied to whether you're hired or not. They, they, are, they are there as sort of a filter process at the end of the day when, hey, we're going to handle your paperwork to get you in here to get interviewed. We're going to handle your paperwork if we decide to hire you. And we're, we're, we might be part of the interview process if we want to see if you're a good cultural fit for the company. And it varies from company to company about what that means and and how it works, but that's their role in HR. And they may get a bonus or not, but even if they have a compensation directly tied to hiring you, which you know puts them in a category where they're more motivated to get you hired, they are they are there long term and they have to deal with the consequences. So let's say they get a five grand bonus for hiring me and I turn out to be an idiot. I I go in there, I am doing I am I have no social norms. I am making my coworkers feel awful, it's gonna reflect poorly on them. So the in-house recruiters are gonna be much more picky in that fashion and are also going to be probably focus on on some cultural things as well, right? And see like, oh, you know what? Maybe we'll cut this guy a little bit of slack and we'll pass him through because I think he'd be a good fit for the company or this guy seems really qualified, but I'm kind of worried because he's he's already said something that's derogatory or something, and we're gonna have to we're just gonna have to pass, because they they have to deal with those consequences. So, when you're working with recruiters, keep an open mind to working with them. I used to not like working with recruiters, but in all honesty, I have seen the benefits in a very short amount of time. In the last several months, they have reached out with very good offers. And this is another thing I'll say: um, recruiters are working with a pay range. And, and if you don't want to go down the path of wasting your time, and this is different depending on what part of your career you're in, right? If you're trying to get that first job, pay, pay really shouldn't be a concern. You're just trying to get the experience and you can worry about pay at the next one or you know discuss that at your one year, so on and so forth. But if you are already employed and you're dealing with a recruiter, feel free to, in that first conversation, have a, have a phone call and, and discuss what compensation you're looking at for that next role. And, and you know, just keep in mind that uh, you don't wanna waste your time or their time, right? If I'm making 100,000 and they're calling or they're emailing me about an $80,000 role, there's really nothing you can say to, to tell me to take 20% less money, right? Unless you're giving me equity in the company. So keep that in mind uh, and it may not, again, it may not be relevant to you when working with recruiters is that they do have a pay range and don't be forward about what you want. Cause there's tons of roles out there and don't waste your time on ones that aren't because I've answered calls for my first two years of my career. Now I've answered these emails and these calls and whether I was looking or not, so I could stay up to date on what people are hiring for, what people are paying, uh, what skills are in demand and uh, so that I could be prepared and test and I you know, do the technical interviews and know, just making sure I'm, I'm on track if, the, if that time comes where I need to you know, move on to the next role. That's all fine and dandy, but you can waste a ton of time dealing with recruiters when one, you're not interested, two, it doesn't pay what you want, and uh, three, that you'll find out, I've had several recruiters that I've worked with that are the nicest people on the phone, wonderful people on the phone, and then when it comes down to the details we discussed in that very first phone call, we had wasted a horrendous amount of time, like six weeks of time, <laughs> five phone calls, two technical interviews, and then the offer comes in, 
and the benefits and the offers 20k less than what you said that you would even consider and you know 10k less in benefits and stuff like that so keep that in mind that's not always on their end sometimes they just lie so there's so because there some recruiters are so incentivized to get you hired they're thinking a lot of times that oh maybe this guy's lying about how much money he makes and if we get him in the same range he's in now he'll jump ship and um, just be aware that sometimes you may be wasting your time it does happen but for the most part you know the recruiters are a great in to a role but don't expect them to get you a job but they can and in-house recruiters um, are a little less incentivized but they're looking more for cultural fits and um, but yeah so anyhow that's today's video about recruiting let me know what your thoughts are on recruiters I uh, you know they're, they're part of the it's so funny how many how many people I've gone to high school with who are sort of figuring out life right now um, and they go into recruiting my sister went into recruiting this year this last year and it, it's one of those things where like i'm wondering so many people i know have become recruiters who is left to work the jobs like who who is left to keep working <clears throat> like there's so many people trying to get other people jobs that it makes me wonder who's left to work the jobs but um anyhow that's today's video don't forget to subscribe hit that notification bell and uh i'll see you guys next time bye Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're interested, my 100 algorithm challenge course is out and I just added 10 new videos to prep you for the technical phone screen. Check it out in the description down below for just 10 bucks.